Thanks, everyone, <laughs> by the way. Right here. Okay. Isn't that next no, one? next one's at lunch. Oh, but sorry. Hi, this is Miss Linton, and this is seventh period honors bio review for unit three, which is enzymes um, and cellular respiration photosynthesis. Say hi. 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 Okay. Yeah. Next one is at lunch, not today's. Okay. Um, all right. So if we address the first chapter, chapter six. Okay, um, was about metabolism, energy, and enzymes. Take a look at this list right here. I have no problem if you want me to, I updated this from the last time, so I can PDF the whole presentation and just put it in the stream for you if you would like. Yes, okay. So what are the laws of thermodynamics? I bet you could tell me those right now without even looking. Energy cannot be created, created destroyed. or destroyed. It can just transfer. transfer. I personally would not type up something that I'm already giving you. I would type up just things that are like, you know what, I ought to study this part of it because I didn't know this very well. Because I'm gonna give you access to all of this. I'll put this whole presentation in Google Classroom in the stream. Would you like me to do that right now so you can type on it or annotate it or are you okay with me keeping going? Keep it going. Keep it going, okay. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only what? Transfer. And the second law says every time it trans transfers, you will lose some as heat. Good. All right, um, what is, uh, how do they relate to entropy and energy? Entropy, remember, is a measure of the amount of what? Disorganization. Disorder, disorganization. So on the entropy scale, this particular kitchen would be high on the entropy scale. If the scale goes from zero to 10, this is definitely <laughs> a 10. Now, entropy, though, um, when you have high entropy, you actually have good, you don't have a lot of potential, but you have, it's really stable. Good, it's really stable. So when we look at something like glucose versus carbon dioxide and water, okay, which one has more potential? Glucose. The glucose has more potential, right? Because there's energy in the bonds that hold the carbons and the hydrogens and the oxygen together. Remember, those bonds equal what? Energy. When you break down glucose through what process? What is that called? Cellular respiration. Then a product, a low energy product, is carbon dioxide and water. So this side over here has high what? Entropy. Entropy and low potential energy. Okay? This is something we can use, right, in our bodies in order to generate ATP. ATP is the energy currency of the body. Remember, what does it stand for? Adenosine, Adenosine triphosphate. Good. All right. Um, we look at this scenario right here. This, where you have hydrogen ions on one side of the membrane, where do we see that? Concentrating ETC. every single ETC. Whether we're doing photosynthesis, right? Na -na 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 -na, right? Or in your electron transport chain. By concentrating hydrogen ions to one side of the membrane, that gives us a lot of potential energy. Because when they go back through, and you could tell me, what is it going to go back through? <coughs> ATP synthase, synthase complex. It's like the turnstile trying, people trying to get into Disneyland. Everybody wants in when it opens. So as you go through that turnstile, you're snapping a phosphate onto ADP, making it ATP. Perfect, okay? Um, this equal distribution, this is like having water at the same level on either side of the dam can't really do anything for you. But in this one, the first picture, then you have more hydrogen on one side than the other. You can use that to do work. That's why this one has more potential. This one has least, less potential. Which one is higher in entropy, in the left or the right? Which one is higher in entropy? The one on the right, right? right? When you have it organized, when you have it on one side, that's low entropy. When it's even everywhere, that's high entropy. All right, and then if going back to, so how the laws of thermodynamics, everything's going to greater and greater disorder. The reason why we do cellular respiration is to fight the disorder so we stay alive, yes? Okay, and the sun's going to greater disorder. Why is it that we harvest the sun, not we, who harvests the sun's energy? Plants. plants doing what process? Photosynthesis. They capture the sun's energy. When the sun is breaking down, the plants capture the sun's energy and they use it to make sugars, 
right? Is that going to be um, a catabolic or anabolic reaction? Catabolic. Okay. Anabolic, because you're using the energy from the sun to put CO2 together to build the sugar, right? You're working to get that. That takes an energy investment. Okay, just like when you look here, if we're here, right, then it would take energy to go back to glucose, right? Does that make sense to you? We'd have to put energy into that to reform glucose from CO2. So that would be anabolic. When we do cellular respiration, this way, that would be what? Catabolic. And the energy that is released through this process, that energy right there is what we use to build a... Okay, so that's how they are related. And then describe two different types of reactions, exergonic, inorganic, catabolic, anabolic. We kind of just did that, but here's a chart as well. Okay, this top reaction, okay, catabolic or anabolic? What do you think? Catabolic. Yeah, we're releasing energy out of it probably. It's an exergonic reaction. So when we look at the amount of free energy, um, it's decreasing. The, the E sub A is decreasing, so when you have a negative change in energy, um, or, sorry, I didn't mean to say that. I meant to say delta G, sorry. When we have um, a, when we go down in free energy, then that's going to be an exergonic reaction, and then conversely, when you go up in free energy, you have more energy as your product, that's gonna be an endergonic reaction. Okay, ask the person next to you if you're, they remember that. I am sure that you are overwhelmed with meeting deadlines that you have for whatever current classes you're taking, right? But I can tell on this particular unit, I don't think many of you have revisited it before today. I think I am reintroducing this to you. Is that accurate? Yeah? Okay. Based on your response to your question, so it makes it a little bit harder because I'm not reviewing it with you. It's almost like I'm reteaching it because you haven't looked at it yet. Okay, so um, we'll get, we'll do it. Um, if you take a look at this right here, this anabolic reaction, is that going to require energy? Yes. yes. Okay, so you have to have an input of energy. Where could you get that from? You could get it from a anabolic reaction that what? Yeah, releases energy, so therefore we can couple them, we can put them together. Good. All right, now, what makes all reactions go faster? Enzymes. Now, enzymes are made out of what primarily? Proteins. <coughs> Proteins. They have a special site on them called the active site. Good. What binds to the active site? Substrate. You're doing good. I'm proud of you. Okay. So when the substrate binds to the active site, it could be that it's building something, the enzyme, or it could be breaking things down. It could be catabolic or anabolic. But does the the active site might temporarily change its shape just for this, just for the moment, right? And that's called the induced fit hypothesis. So it's gonna change its shape for the moment, but an enzyme, the beauty of an enzyme is it doesn't get used up. You can use it over and over and over and over again to, and that's why it works so good to speed up reactions. What do enzymes do? They lower the what? Exactly, there's always, even an exergonic reaction, there's always a hurdle. So even here, they didn't draw it, but there's some little hurdle that prevents this reaction from going forward. That's good, so you just don't fall apart because you're kind of a complex piece of machinery here. You don't wanna just fall apart. There are all of these little hurdles. So what enzymes will do is they will lower that hurdle so it makes it more likely for that reaction just to go forward just on the kinetic energy of the system. So what are some things that can affect enzyme activity? Well. Um, how much substrate you have. The assumption is the greater the amount of substrate, then the more product you will get. We did a lab on that, right? Okay, and all of these, you wanna review the labs that were associated with it because chances are I'm gonna ask you a lab question, okay? Chances are high, like 100% that you'll get asked on one or another lab. So you wanna be familiar with the labs that you have done, right? Hello, tell me I assist you. Hi. I am. Are you looking to see if you have somebody or did you need to ask me a question? And you're currently getting recorded for my YouTube channel. Yes, I <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right. Okay. Um, you know who that is? No. You know who that is? No. 
know who it is? No. He's a former student, and he's now the baseball coach. I think his last name was Harris, Jeff Harris. Is that right? He was one of my students like 20 years ago. I know. Your teacher's old. Okay, come back to me. So, if you increase, remember with our enzyme lab, do you remember what our substrate was? H2O3. H2O3. We assume if we increase the amount of hydrogen peroxide we had in our solution, we would have more product. What was our product? Oxygen, yeah. So you can do that up into a point where you have saturation of the active site. So if the enzyme is working at 100%, right, if you're using every single active site, you're not going to increase the rate of that product. What are some other things that can affect enzyme activity? pH. pH and temperature, okay? So here's one showing you pH, two different enzymes working at, at two different pHs, and you could also do that with temperature. Enzymes are very temperature specific, okay? Then do you remember we talked about competitive and non-competitive inhibitors? So competitive inhi inhibitors bind to the active site and compete with the substrate. Non-competitive inhibitors bind to a second site. Do you remember what that second site is called? Allosteric site. Boom, allosteric site. Okay, so this site right here is not the active site that I've highlighted in green. It's an allosteric site. It's a secondary site. A non-competitive, meaning it's not competing for the active site. A non-competitive inhibitor, inhibitor binds to the allosteric site. But you know, since it's a protein, if one thing binds, it rearranges all the bonds within it, it will end up changing the active site, and so the active site is no longer functioning. That doesn't mean it's a bad thing. You could have enough of whatever product you have, so it could be facilitating the shutdown of an enzyme because you have enough of the whatever protein you're trying to make. Okay, um, that, all right. Okay, then that, let's make sure we hit everything on there. Exergonic, endergonic, how do enzymes work? How are they regulated? Oh, oxidized versus reduced. Okay, oxidized versus reduced. Let's make a little chart for that. That'll help us with that. Okay, who has more energy? Okay, so as far as energy goes, if it's reduced, it has more. Oxidized has less. Okay, what else could you tell me about it? Reduced has higher levels of hydrogen and oxidized has lower. lower. Okay, what else? Oxidized has oxygen. Yep. And then one more you could tell me. Electrons. Electrons. Good, I wrote that really well. Is that what you're going to tell me? It's a terribly ugly chart. I can't believe you're memorializing it with a picture, but okay, yay. This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Bad teacher. Okay, good. Moving on. We did that. We did that. We did that. Okay. Let's go here. All right. We have reviewed this so much to me in my mind, but the equation for cellular respiration and photosynthesis, right? And you want to be able to identify what gets reduced, what gets oxidized, where it occurs each step, what its purpose is. Um, if I was going to summarize cellular respiration, take a look at this diagram. When it says oxidative phosphorylation down here, what is that referring to? Carbon dioxide. Uh, oxygen oh, cashes in. Look at your reactions here. What would that be? BTC. Yeah. This is your electron transport chain. And it's called oxidative phosphorylation because oxygen, this is what you were referring to, catches the electrons at the bottom of the chain by oxygen removing those electrons forming what? Water. Water. Then that keeps the electrons moving through the chain. Keeping the electrons moving through the chain allows you to create a hydrogen ion gradient. Remember reductase, reductase, cytochrome oxidase. So you put a bunch of hydrogens in the inner membrane space. When they come back in, you make what? ATP. That's why it's called oxidative phosphorylation. Also, think about this. You bring all your what? Reduced NADs and FADs, take them to the top of the ETC. They, yeah, uh-uh. They were reduced when we, uh-uh, they drop off their electrons and they're oxidized. na 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 oxygen catches at the bottom forming water. Okay? 
So um, if you have oxygen, then you can do transition prep, move into the mitochondria. You can do your Krebs cycle. What's another name for the Krebs cycle? Citric acid, citric acid cycle, right? And in the cit Krebs citric acid cycle, you're spitting out CO2s and reduced NADs, yeah? So an FAD and an ATP. You take all the NADs from glycolysis, transition prep, Krebs cycle to the top of the ETC. No oxygen, you gotta do fermentation. The reason why you're doing fermentation is in glycolysis, who does glycolysis? All cells. All cells. In glycolysis, you will what? Reduce some NAD and make some ATP too, okay? But before you can make the ATP, you have to what? Reduce some NAD. So if all of your NAD is in the reduced state, then you have no more to do this, then you can't do this. So we've got to oxidize our NAD, and it doesn't matter which way you go, whether you make lactic acid, which what? Yeast. Or whether you make yeast, or sorry, whether you make alcohol, like plants and yeast do, either way you oxidize the NAD, okay? We can put those <coughs> songs together if you want to, and we can run through those once if you would like. I just want to finish this part. Remember your structures of where everything occurs, okay? So glycolysis, right, is in the cytoplasm. Transition prep, we move into the mitochondria, right? And then electron transport chain, our Krebs cycle inside the matrix of the mitochondria. Electron transport chain occurs on the Chris day of the mitochondria. Good with all that? Okay, here's a picture of the Krebs cycle if you needed a reminder of it. Here's a picture, and I will, like I said, I'll put these, all these pictures in Google Classroom, these summary pictures, so you have access to this presentation. Um, and here's a picture of fermentation, okay? Chapter eight was about plants and photosynthesis, so for this one, we need to remind ourselves of the structure of the chloroplast, okay, and those thylakoid membranes. And if you remember, we do everything opposite. If we are pushing electrons out, from mitochondria, we're bringing them what? In. in, okay, when we do photosynthesis. And then when they move back out, they'll make ATP. You have light dependent reactions and light independent. independent. The light dependent ones are gonna be on these green pancakes, right? That's where the um, chlorophyll is. It can capture the light energy. That's where your reaction centers are in order to start your ETCs. In the spaces around these green hollow pancakes, that's where you do your dark reaction Calvin cycle light independent reaction, okay? Where you're, where you're now bringing in CO2s and using your energy from ATP and using your electrons from reduced NADP in order to build your sugar. Make sure you don't make mistakes on things like NAD versus NADP, right? You're gonna remember that NADP is dealing with Closest. Yeah, plants, and then NAD is with um, cellular respiration, good. Okay, and so this is just another picture. It'll be available for you to review if you want. Um, we talked about the electromagnetic spectrum, and we talked about different wavelengths of light. Why would it be an adaptation for plants to have various pigments? Because they can absorb more sunlight, more sunlight. good. Okay, and there's just another picture differentiating between the light and the dark reaction. On your light reaction, remember you have photosystem two, two, which is splitting of the water. Water's formula is what? H2O, we're in photosystem two, two electrons, if that will help you. Gets excited, na 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 na, -na. you make some what? ATP, good. Same two electrons, yeah, PQ brings them in. Same two electrons, we get excited again, but now we're in photosystem one, one and done. This is the last part of the system. It's excited this time, we don't let it cool all the way down. Who do we give it to? NADP forming reduced NADP. Okay, then you take some ATP and some reduced NADP to the dark reaction or the Calvin cycle light independent reaction, right? You're gonna do this twice. Every time you do this reaction, you bring in three CO2s every single time. When you come out of it, right, instead of having three individual carbons, you've hooked them all together and you have something called G3P. G3P, or what's another name for it? PJL. And you make, you actually make six, but you only take one. You leave five in to keep this party going again. So if you've done it twice, technically you would have a 
yeah, molecule of glucose. And remember, glucose, or the G3P, or PJL, is the building block for everything the plant needs, right? Through modifications of that, it can make amino acids, or it can make starch, right? Um, it can make oils, it can make um, everything that it needs to off of that G3P. And we said, uh-oh, naughtiness, when we, refute, when we talk about RUBP, because it's supposed to bind with CO2, and sometimes it binds with O2. O2. And we call that photorespiration. That's bad. There are two <laughs> adaptations to avoid that, because RUBP, if the, if the CO2 levels go down, because let's say the holes on the leaves of stomata are closed, and it's still doing a bunch of photosynthesis, oxygen levels are going up, but the CO2 levels are low, then RUVP will hook up with oxygen. So one way to avoid that um, are what's called C4 plants. And basically they isolate the dark reaction. They insulate it. They have it take place in these bundle sheet cells and then the mesophyll cells surround it and they literally use a compound called PEP, who is never tempted by the fruit of another. PEP will always bind with CO2. It'll escort CO2 into where the dark reaction is taking place. So you're doing it in less places, but overall the benefits must outweigh the cost because it costs to, to use PEP. And then a second way to do that, okay, is um, fixing still with PEP, um, but you fix a bunch of CO2 at night when it's cool outside and your stomata are open and you can store a bunch of CO2. And then when you need it, um, you can use it during the daytime when your stomata are closed. Um, here's another diagram just comparing and contrasting those two um, reactions. If you wanted that, I have that there as well. Okay, are you ready to sing? Okay. All right. Um, by the way, if you're just listening to this, um, these songs are on YouTube. Just kind of Google the photosynthesis song or the cellular respiration song. Let's start with, uh, let's start with cellular respiration, right? What's the whole thing called? Cellular, cellular respiration. respiration. First step? Glycolysis. Who does it? All cells. Where? In the cytoplasm. What do we start out with? Glucose. How many carbons? Six. What are you going to do? Break it in half. Step? Ten. Ten. Enzyme? Ten. Ten. Called? Two pyruvic acids. And do? Reduce some NAD and make some ATP. Two. Oh, we have plenty of oxygen. What should we do? Aerobic respiration. What's the next step called? Transition prep. Here we go. And you reduce the NAD and two acetyl CoA put one away. Two plus four is six. Do the bit get five. Do the bit get four. Make an ATP. Reduce an FAD. Reduce an NAD. And two plus four is six. Do the bit get five. Do the bit get four. Make an ATP. Reduce an FAD. Reduce an NAD. And stop. Gather all your reduced NADs and FADs and take them to the top of the ETC. Uh uh. Na 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 na. Reductase, reductase, cytochrome oxidase. Can do. Make some ATP. A lot of it, a lot of it, a lot of it. Or a lot of it, a lot of it. Can't have questions at the bottom. Oxygen forming water. Water, 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 water. What are we going to do? Break it in half. What do we get? Oxygen and electrons. Sweet, sweet. Here comes the sun, traveling in waves, particles of light are called photons, and it gets the electrons excited. Ah, na 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 P, Q, and you make some ATP. Mm. Here comes the sun, traveling in waves, particles of light are called photons, and it gets the electrons excited. Ah, na 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 Who catches it? NADP, forming a reduced NADP. Then you take some ATP, tends to reduce NADP to the dark reaction or the Calvin cycle, or the light independent reaction. 3C5 plus 3C1 makes 3C6, break down to 6C3. Mm. Use some ATP, use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. Take one away, PJL, G3E. And you're left with 5C3, use some ATP to build 3C5 plus 3C1 makes 3C6, break down to 6C3. Hmm. Use some ATP, use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. Take one away, glucose, glucose. And you're left with 5C3. Use some ATP to build 3C5. Stop. Pick up your glucose. How many carbons in it? Six. What are you going to do? Break it in half. Depth? Ten. Enzyme? Ten. Cold? 
with who? CO2, right? 3C5 plus 3C1 makes 3C6. Perfect. Perfect. But when CO2 levels are low, then it's like, hmm, maybe oxygen? If So why would CO2 levels be low? Because the stomata, when we look back at the leaf, right, here in our leaf, in our leaf, your leaf might have to close the doors because it's losing too much water. Yeah. But it's in the sun, so it's still doing photosynthesis. It's using up all the CO2 that's inside the leaf, and it's producing a lot of what? Oxygen. oxygen. This tempts our UVP, all this oxygen. So one adaptation. Most plants, they're just tempted, and that's it. But one adaptation is to use a compound called PEP. PEP will bind, OK? PEP will bind with only CO2. If oxygen comes a knocking, it ignores it. And PEP will then ask, it's, and PEP, now here we have a C4, it will escort the CO2 into RUBP, so RUBP is not tempted. Why is it not tempted? Because these bundle sheath cells right here, it's the only place they're doing their dark reaction and they're totally walled off by other cells. Strategy number two is cam plants. What cam plants do is they will use PEP, but at night when the stomata are open and they just store a bunch of CO2. So if the stomata close during the day, they don't mind because they've already pre-stored it. Both of those strategies cost you ATP, but like I said, the benefits must outweigh the cost of the ATP. Okay, what else? What's PEP? It's just a compound, just like NADP is a compound. I'm not having you know the structural components of it. Okay, what else? Yes. There's like the whole um, non-cyclic and cyclic Yes, we can talk about that. Great, great question. Okay, so um, when, you look at, um, when you look at photosynthesis, it is non, the one that's used predominantly, is non-cyclic. And that means electrons are coming in and electrons are going out. It's not a cycle. How do electrons get in? Electrons get in via what molecule? Water, yeah. So they're dropping the electrons off. Those electrons from water are getting excited. They're na na nine. They're helping make ATP. They're getting excited again. And they get given right there to NADP, who takes them away. Okay? NADP is ultimately going to give it to the CO2 in the dark reaction, chemical cycle, and independent reaction. So the electrons that were once in water go to build the sugars. That's why it's called non cyclic. Cyclic, what you would see in cyclic is you would just see just this, okay? And so you don't need any source of water. You're going to use electrons that are in the pigment, and those electrons are going to get excited. You're going to make some ATP. They're going to get excited again. You're going to make some ATP. You don't get oxygen from it because you're not splitting water, and you don't get reduced NADP from it because you don't have a source of electrons. So would plants just do it if they don't have access to water? Mm -hmm. Or back up, they need more ATP, but they're not making any reduced NADP. Just like we do anaerobic respiration and back up to aerobic. We can't live on it, but we can do it. Mm -hmm. What else? All right, I'm proud of you. Good job coming in today. I know you're tired. Good job, good job. We'll see you manana. Make good choices. 